KDB. KDB is fire. Stop your rumors. I stay on track like a boxer. Shouts out to all the essential workers at the Blue Flame and all that. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. Appreciate y'all for holding me down. Will y'all do me a big favor, please. <clears throat> Damn, I hate how they just jump right into the just boom. Here go Vach. Let me see. Can I? Can I? 
can we do a fade in? So here we go. Boom. Hey, intro. Hey, yeah, we fade by chance. All right. Hey, man. Come on in. Well, come on inside and get yourself something cool to drink. Appreciate y'all for being here. Love y'all to pieces. Once again, we back at it again. A little bit of housekeeping before we get going. Got some special guests lined up on the show. On their way. It's going to be happening over this week. The course of this week. We're going to have some special guests next week. Some special guests the week after that. It's going to be a fun next couple of weeks on the show. So y'all be sure to tap in. Tap into the Patreon, man. Patreon.com slash Vosh Lombardi. We had a good little time watching running backs over there. I'm going to talk about one of my favorite running backs that we ended up watching yesterday. Uh, we're going to get that going once we, um, you know, once we tap in with, with the with the, with the the content and whatnot. But um, also, if you haven't noticed, I'm dropping a lot of content. Dom the Marco. Marco. It was pretty loud. Dom the Marco. There we go. Um. I'm dropping a lot of content, you know what I'm saying? Just, you know, and, and I ain't just dropping content to be dropping content. I ain't, I ain't up here talking about the foolishness. I ain't talking about, you know, no nonsense or whatever, right? Like, if I have a legit talking point that we can we can do some some content about, it, you know, I always, I always, look, um, I always look around to my cowboy brethren for inspiration and, you know, how they, how they do things. And I'm just looking at my bro, Law Nation. I'm always support Law Nation to hold him down. And I just see him working hard and i remember once upon a time i was only doing work like i don't know once a week you know every other week or whatever and i would see law streaming three times a week and i said all right i'm about to start doing work three times a week then i started seeing law do do a little bit of something every day and i'm like damn dog shout out to law nation I'm about to start doing stuff every day or at least five days a week you know what i'm saying we started doing that law put out multiple pieces of content today <laughs> multiples <laughs> and there was a piece of me that was like, no way, Jose. You ain't about to see uh, Lombardicus Prime come up in here and dropping multiple things today. But then I thought to myself, because I do have an audience, that's you all, and y'all rock with me. And I thought to myself, as long as I got something to say, Why not share it with you? Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? If I got something to say, why not Why not share it with you? You know what I mean? Um, like I said, I'm not just going to flood your timeline with some nonsense, but if there's things to do, if there's things to say, then let's do it. For example, uh, we got a live stream today where I'm going to go over some mailbag stuff. That's going to be fun. I got a, a story about why we're doing mailbag today, but we're going to do it. Uh, I dropped a film session on Leatu Latu. Okay, y'all go check that out if you haven't. Plus, I was on social media and people was arguing with 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 Duke Manny whether about offensive line. It's false. <laughs> out of all the things to argue with with him about, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I made a video and put in my two cents about the whole Tyler Smith playing tackle and guard thing. So, I I feel like shout out the law inspiration. As long as it's something to talk about we're always going to be putting out content. And of course, um, you know, we're, we're, we're live right this second. So we're going to be up in the content just a little bit, but, uh, I'm, I, I just saw a handful of people in different of those comment sections saying that they're not getting notifications. So, uh, we're going to be doing much more than just the three o'clock show. Of course, you don't have to have your notification for the, you know, three o'clock show, but if you want to, you can, but we're going to be dropping, uh, content throughout the day, whether it be soliloquy, uh, you know, whether it be a film session, just a thought that I have about something that I saw on um, social media, be around, be around so you can be able to tap in with me. All right. Uh, but, uh, with that being said, man, we got a little bit of work, man. Appreciate y'all for being here, man. I'm your host. Hey, you. V O C H L O M B A R D I. Love y'all to pieces, 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 pieces. Hey, man. Uh, so this is this is why we're doing mailbag today, okay? I did a mailbag show uh, like a month ago, something like that. If you, if you saw the thumbnail, then you know this already. I uh, did a mailbag show about a month ago, and I was like, "All right, mailbag show. Let's 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 just run through all the questions and do some Q and A's on the mailbag show. And I thought that was a fantastic idea to do some Q and A's on the mailbag show. But um, restream let us down and it crapped out, and we only got a chance to answer like three questions or whatever. So what we're gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm going back 
There it is right there. I'm going back to that post and I'm going to go over any Q and A's that I may have missed or anything, any Q and A's that I feel like I, I can give y'all a good answer for. So, um, we're going to go over that today. Um, and then we're going to, you know, we're going to, um, take the calls. We're going to do supers. We're going to do, do, you know what I'm saying? Do all the regular stuff. Uh, Hey, I didn't get one for the video, but I got one for the live. Really weird. That is strange. So, Hey, just go to the channel. Well, you, you can do it right. It's down there somewhere. Just hit the bell and cut it off and then just hit it to cut it back on. Or if you just have it off, just hit the bell to, to cut it back on. This is a legit re this ain't just me selling the product. Like that's a legit reason to cut the bell on. If you don't want to miss nothing, I got content coming out. So, uh, there you go. Or you could just, um, you know, go to the page and check it out. All right, let's get into it, man. First things first, before we get started. Okay. Before we get started with the Q and A's and all that. We were in the Patreon last night, patreon.com slash Bosch Lombardi. That's where we watch the majority of our film. We go in there and uh, we watch cowboy film every Tuesday and Wednesday um, during the season. But in the off season, you know, we have drafts. So uh, there's, there's a lot more content over on the Patreon than there is. Then there is uh, boom, 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 here on YouTube or whatever. And I, and I will be dropping some film on, on YouTube, but boy 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 chat we got a new challenger i've always watched ray davis from kentucky in passing right and that's a that's a big thing about how i watch film like like you know just y'all getting me and understanding how i watch film like i may know a player from watching kentucky in passing and then i may see some clips here or there but it's different when we watch a full game and we deep dive, we really figure it out. Yesterday on the Patreon, patreon.com slash Vosh Lombardi, we did a relative deep dive on Ray Davis, the running back from Kentucky. He's gonna be number one for the for the duration of the film session. He's also the, the running back, okay? And I'm just up here like, man, that's my RB3, dog. And what I think is so important about Ray Davis is, first of all, I think he's a he's a really good runner, like just as a runner. I'll go ahead and get me up off of that, man. Y'all need to see me up there. I think he's he's really good as a runner in general, like just running. But boy, there's something to complete backness, right? Audric Estime is a fun runner. And he has a physical trait as a power runner, but he may not be like the fast guy and he may can catch a pass a little bit, but he's not really a great blocker to me. You know, Marshawn Lloyd, who's really good in the open field, but you know, maybe you're not sure between the tackles. Will Shipley's a pass catcher, but you may have questions about some of the other stuff. Jonathan Brooks knee hurt. Dom DeMonco. DeMonco. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it's, it's just a lot of questions about a lot of these running backs and these running backs may not be complete for whatever reason. This play was crazy. Ray Davis coming out of, uh, coming out of the, uh, the, uh, backfield here, attacking the middle of the defense, getting one-on-one -on -one with a, with a linebacker and catching that joint over his shoulder, finding it in the air, tracking the ball and catching it over his shoulder. Oh, no. Stepping up, making blocks and, and and all this kind of stuff, right? Goal line back, big play back, balance back, vision back. And, and, and Ray Davis, if you're going to put a knock on him, it may be like long speed and, you know, people may care that he's 24 years old. I don't care that he's 24 because I don't want my running back to be 30 years old on my team. No way. Like, you know, use him for the four years and, you know, we'll just find another one. That's just what running back is in the league nowadays, right? Man, I'm looking at Ray Davis, dog. In the event, this is why it's important. Because I know we hear a lot about Jonathan Brooks and um, Trey Benson, Florida State, right? Jonathan Brooks from Texas and uh, Benson from Florida State. We hear a lot about those guys because they're probably going to be the first backs off the board. Like they're your premier day two backs and they might be third round picks somewhere. The reason why I'm bringing these guys up, because what if you find a wide receiver on the board that you can't run from? What if there's a wide receiver on the board where the value just makes so much sense him versus a running back just wouldn't make sense, right? Like, like, like it just wouldn't add up to, to, to take Trey Benson over AD Mitchell or something. I don't know. Pick a receiver, pick a running back, Jalen Polk or something. I don't know. So in my mind, what if, and we just talk my Cowboys now, right? In my mind, what if we run into a scenario, y'all can call in by the way. In my mind, what if we run into a scenario to where 
Bro, Jonathan Brooks made it to 56. Linebacker Texas and Jonathan Brooks made it to 56. Mm. Tavondre Sweat sitting right there and we thinking about it. Ennis Rakestraw, who is a corner that I like a bunch that has no business being around at, you know, 56 or whatever, right? What happens when you're caught up in that situation and you go, dang, dog, my 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 favorite running back or a or a or a better player? That like that's the scenario that I was in. That's the conversation that I was in. And I was like, all right, man, I need to figure out what the rest of these backs really on, right? Don't just draft Braylon Allen if you don't mean it. Don't draft Audric Estime if you don't mean it. Oh, they're a running back, but I don't love them. But I'm gonna draft them because they're a running back. Man, I started watching Ray Davis, man. I put him back up there. I ain't doing nothing now. I started watching Ray Davis, man. I was like, bro, I love this player. And I want him on my team. Like, he's a player that, because anytime you love somebody, like that player may come with a first round price tag or a second round price tag. Ray Davis is a third, man, man he got a block that, that just made me scream on uh, Patreon yesterday. Where is it at? It was against number 10 from Georgia. This one, this, 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 no, 10 was more inside than he worked outside and Ray Davis blocked him up real good. Give me, give me two seconds to find, I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna find it, God damn it. Is it right here? No, 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 no. I'm gonna find it, hold on chat. I'm gonna find it, hold on chat. I'm gonna find it. Okay, maybe I won't find it. <laughs> All right, then maybe I won't find it. Okay, my bad, my bad. Okay, but, but, but boy, he had a block that was so impressive, right? Boy, he had a block that was so impressive. And I was like, man, I, 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 I like this player so much. And he's like a third, early fourth round dude. And that's cool. That's cool for me. How many players can you say that about? And I was like, man, if I miss out on, on Jonathan Brooks, I'm cool. If I miss out on, on, on Trey Benson, that's cool. If you can get Graham Barton, right? That's a good block too, though. If you can get Graham Barton in the second round, let's just say, you know, uh, Peyton Wilson's there. Peyton Wilson's going to fall because of the injuries, but he's a Cowboy 30 visit, right? Let's just say Peyton Wilson is your second round pick, but you miss running back there. Man, if Ray Davis had to be my running back after that, I'm still going to Golden Corral, bro. I am going to Golden Corral and I'm not looking back. I'm still trying to find that block, y'all. My bad. I'm still going to go and corral and I'm not looking back. I don't know, man. Chat, have y'all seen uh Ray Davis? I may have to pull him up on the I may have to pull the uh the uh, big film up to find him, dog, because now I'm getting upset. Now I'm getting upset here. I really want to show y'all the play. But I'm sure there there are other running backs that that we could we could possibly look at. Like like there's a lot of estimate fans out there, and Braylon Allen is a 30 visit from Wisconsin. The biggest key in this whole thing is that you don't have a fourth round pick right now. Like as of right now, you don't have a fourth round pick. Hey, them lay them, them lay round running backs may be the one that's going to put the nipple on the titty for you. They may be the one that's going to that's 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 going to really that's going to really put the nipple on the titty for you. One more thing too though. And I'm going to ask um I'm going to ask one of my you know, one of my content homies, you know, just uh, somebody that's in the building. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask Brian Bars, right? Yeah, I'm, the I'm ask Brian Bars. Um, I'm going to ask him about uh, these day two tackles because we should be prepared to get our feelings hurt. You know what I'm saying? I ain't saying that our feelings are going to be hurt, but we should be prepared. You know what I'm saying? Like, for example, we need left tackle. I don't want to move Tyler Smith to left tackle. I want to keep him at left guard. If y'all curious about why I want to leave Tyler Smith at, at left guard, I did a video about five reasons why we should keep Tyler Smith at left guard. I'm actually going to pin it to the to the, to the the top of the comments. I actually dropped it in there earlier. Boom, there you go. Watch it later. I actually have a good reason, five good reasons why, you know, I would want to keep him there, but I still have an issue at left tackle here. So in the event that I can't get a left tackle in the first round, let's just say Troy Fats is gone. Fautenu. Talisi Fuwaga is a 30 visit, but I Cowboys not gonna 
He not gonna unless Cowboys trading up, but I don't see the Cowboys doing that. Um, I can. Here we go. J.C. Latham is a right tackle slash guard. Or Marius Mims is a right tackle, but I don't really know if he can play left tackle. I'm going to ask somebody and get their uh, thoughts and opinion on that. I don't think Tyler Guyton is all that good to be a first-round pick. I think he could be like a second-round guy, but he'll go in the first round. Like, like, like that's his going rate. And I know for sure that the Cowboys think of uh, – of, uh, excuse me, there we go. Um, Cowboys think of Jordan Morgan as a tackle. I mean, pardon me. They they think of him as a guard. They should be thinking of Jordan Morgan as a tackle, but they but they think of him as a guard. So here's my question to myself. We doing mailbag today. Here's my my plight and my question to myself. If I had to spin the block and come back and get Kingsley Sewell Matea from BYU, would I be happy? And the answer is I don't know. Kieran Amadilla from Yale, beating up on the Monmouth and Holy Cross and the Princeton kids. If he had to be my left tackle, could I live with that? I don't know. Awesome Richards. I don't know. I don't know. Blake Fisher. If like, could I live with him being my left tackle? Possibly. Patrick Paul, not good. Derek, uh, puny or puny. However you want to call it. We actually, uh, undrafted selected his brother or something or his, or his cousin. He's just like all the other cats that we got. He's he's just like the the Kansas kid that we got last year. Bostic, the he's an athlete that's not really strong. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about him. Pittsburgh got a kid named Mac Mac Concalvis. Con Mac Concalvis. I watched him and I'm like, damn, dog. Like we got well, let's go and ball at home. I said all that to say, man. My 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 tackle options down the draft made me a little bit upset. I like Christian Jones a bunch from Texas. I like him a whole bunch, but day one plug right in and go. I mean, we need to trade it up, man. We need to trade up, bro. We need to trade up. It is what it is. We need to trade up, get one of the tackles. Now we need to get we need to get Troy Fowler doing something. I, I, let me find out if Mims can play left or right. Or left hand right. Let me just figure that out. If Terrence Steele could play left tackle, this wouldn't be a problem. But, you know, you don't. Devin Overton says Patrick Paul or Chuma Doga. Chuma Doga is much better than Patrick Paul. Just Chuma Doga don't know the plays, but Patrick Paul don't know neither. <laughs> Chuma Doga don't know the plays, but Patrick Paul don't neither. So I'm just going Chuma Doga. Did we get Tyler to replace uh, Tyron when the when the time came? I think in in you know, in all fairness, I think that's that's what they wanted. But then Tyler Smith became an All Pro guard, and then it was like, hey man, you really want to move that dude around? Overton says take short arm Morgan. Well, George, he Jordan Morgan ain't got short arms. He got like regular arms, and that's my thing. I would I would take him, but the Cowboys look at him as a guard, not a tackle. They look at him as a as a guard, not a tackle. But anyway, um, let's get into some of y'all's Q and A. Long long story short, man. And if you listen to our pundit friends, our media friends, and scout friends, they'll tell you that. Oh well, tackle tackle is deep in this class. Let me let me help. Let me let me introduce some more verbiage to the conversation. A little more nomenclature to this whole thing, right? Just how I can identify guys a little better, right? Or just identify drafts a little better. I don't want to say that this tackle class is deep. I'd rather say that this tackle class is thick, right? For example, pause. For example, the running back class is deep. You can go to the fifth round and, and find a running back you like. Isaac Isaac Guerrero may be a fourth round, fifth round guy, and you, you may possibly like him. Going into day three means a class is deep for me. Offensive tackle is not deep. This year, wide receiver is not deep. Those two positions are thick. Pause. What is, what's the difference between thick and deep? Pause. Deep is, you know, so like I said, deep goes into day three. I don't think there are many wide receivers that I would like to go into day three. To, to, to go into day three. I don't think there are many offensive tackles that I like that can go into day three. 
but all of them kind of either bunched in the first round or the or like in day two somewhere. The wide receivers got three to four guys, maybe five that's bona fide first round dudes, but it's like 12 second and third round guys. So wide receivers more thick. Offensive line, tackle in particular, all them dudes going in the first round. All of them. I even seen mock drafts because Kingsley Sewell and Taylor's a second round, a second, third round player to me. I've seen mock drafts where teams got Kingsley Sewell and Taylor going in, in the first round because he's a tackle. They're going to run out. And you up here thinking tackle deep and you up in round three. All right, who's my tackle on the board? And you stuck with some, some, some nonsense because you thought tackle was deep. It ain't deep. It's thick. <laughs> no diddy. <laughs> What's better, thick or deep, Paul? Um, Oh, it's a good question. Maybe because the class is so thick that it makes itself deep, right? Like we're in round two. Let me let me just name off some of these day two. Let's just talk wide receivers for a second, right? Day two wide receivers. Brian Thomas could be a day two wide receiver, but I think he's gonna go early. Lad McConkey's technically a day two wide receiver. Could go early. A.D. Mitchell is technically a day two wide receiver that could go early. Troy Franklin is a day three wide receiver that's going to go day two. Roman Wilson, Ricky Pearsall, Jermaine Burton, Keon Coleman, Jalen Polk, Xavier Leggett, Jalen McMillan, Xavier Worthy, Tez Walker are all day two guys. Johnny Wilson might be a tight end. Jamari Thrash... I would have to just find some work for him, but uh, Brendan Rice, day two pick for me. Malachi Corley, day two pick for me. Jacob Cowing is kind of like a fourth round dude, but he could go in day three, which makes him a day two pick for me. Javon Baker, who's technically what you would get from Jalen Tolbert. He's a guy that I could see going late third round. That's a, that's a day two pick for me. Malik Washington is definitely a fourth round pick, but if you take him in at the end of day three, I won't hurt. I mean, I'm not going to hate it. You know what I'm saying? You, you just got to take your dudes wherever you got to take them at. Luke McCaffrey may go fourth round, but in, in real life, he's a he's a day two pick to me, right? So that's what I mean by thick. All these, why, there are so many. Let me see if y'all like disagree or agree. There are so many of these wide receivers that fit right in that day two range. That's thick. Like it's, 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 it's more stacked sideways. Pause. It's fact. You know what I'm saying? Just, just, just if, if necessary, whatever. Uh, it, it, the wide receiver class is more stacked sideways. O line is top heavy, in my opinion. What's top heavy? Okay, we're gonna get the first round guys up out of here. Let's just talk about offensive linemen, offensive tackles in particular. Let's go tackles that are that are that are that are gonna go first round. I just named all the other tackles that I don't like that make me upset. And those tackles that make me upset that I didn't like too much, those are dudes that's gonna go in round three, round two and three. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Alt, Fuwaga, Fautanu, Fashanu, Latham, Mims, Guyton. All those dudes are round one guys. Man, Patrick Paul not good, dog. <laughs> Patrick Paul ain't good, bro. Law Nation in the building. I just, I just, I, I just finished giving you props, and now you want to come over here and talk about some thick and deep. Stop it. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. But you feel me, though. You feel me, though. Anyway, this is a Q&A episode, so let's start to get that going, okay? I'm going to pull up these questions that some of y'all said a month ago. Then I'm going to read some supers, and then I'm going to read the chat. I might just shut the phone down today. I don't know. I might just shut it down today. I don't know. I might just, we might do text Q&A today. But let's get Cowboy Jay in first, see what he's talking about. What's up, Cowboy Jay? What's up? What's up with you, Vox? Man, you cool. Man, cool and player. Everything good. What you got for me today? Not much. I was just calling in the South Bend, which I ain't heard in, which in a while. Um, now, I'm, I mean, the Cowboys, the way they're moving right now, is very interesting. I mean, it's very fraudulent uh, against everything they've been saying, talking about all in. I know we're talking about draft. Um, I, I want mine to tackle, a tackle or a center. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to actually run the ball, 
that's what you need. I mean, me being a former running back, well, I wanted I wanted to trust and believe in my my offensive lineman. Sure. I want to know that I can get somewhere. I mean, you you might be able to cut up the field. And, I mean, you might be able to truck some people. But I mean, you need to know that you can pick up five yards, not just by yourself, but just off your offensive line alone. Now, once you get to the secondary, that's all on you. You know what I mean? Sure. Um. Then another thing, if we got any free time right now, we're cool or not? Nah? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. What's up? What's up? Mm-hmm. All right. So I got the tape. It's about Ralph. It ain't even about football. I know you, you're you pretty good on the outside. I, I'll be looking at your rats and shows. So how do you feel about J. Cole? Um... Just quickly before I get back into football, I don't I don't think J. Cole has enough moments in hip hop that really matters. I think Kendrick got a whole bunch of moments. I think Drake got a whole bunch of moments. That. I think I, I mean Drake uh, J. Cole's biggest moment was finding out that he let Nas down. That was his biggest moment. And besides that, he no. went and besides that, J. Cole went crazy on a whole bunch of features, but that doesn't stack up to, you know, Drake beefing with Meek or something or uh, Kendrick dropping um, um, Control or just him dropping different albums that just impact the culture in that way. Nicki Minaj on 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 Monster is a is a is a much bigger moment than J. Cole's ever had. So my honest opinion about J. Cole, I think he's a really good rapper, but I, I don't think he has a whole bunch of moments in hip hop that'll make him legendary. He should he should say something to Kendrick and rap real good. He love to rap good on these features and all that. He should rap real good to Kendrick and make a moment. I feel like you're talking hard on my man's right now. You ask me? I don't know, bro. You ask me? You talking hard on Cole, you, man. You, you, Cole's that dude. Hey, Cole, is, like a, Cole is really so good. What, if you had to rank him right now for the present day time, would you say top five? For the present day rappers, right sure, now. Sure, sure, but but that don't mean he got a whole bunch of moments. So, so you want to say like the middle child is a moment? No. Or like it's a good song. Uh, huh? Nope, it's a good song. You know, so you know, all right. So how about um, Forbidden Fruit? It's a good song, but it's not a moment. We're gonna have to. We're gonna. I, I'll get back with you. I know you're talking about football. Today. We'll revisit. We'll revisit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do it again. We'll do it again. We'll do it again. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Good call, Cowboy right. Jay. We'll we'll do this. You too. Hey man. Stay scheme and drop everything. Everything stop moving. <laughs> Control drop everything. Stop moving. To uh 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 Kanye's first three albums, beautiful, dark, twisted, fancy. Everything stop moving. Fifty Cent versus Kanye was a thing. Get rich or die trying. Everything stop moving. Stop snitching. Stop lying. Game was beefing with three hundred bars and running. Everything stop moving. J Cole never made everything stop moving. <laughs> never. Anyway, uh, but let let us let, let, just let's just get back into this work though, man. Y'all know I I badly want to get into my non football content. Y'all know I love those bags. But to his point though, he was asking about interior offensive linemen. Interior offensive line. Runs thick paws, right? Because all them dudes kind of in that same area. Um, do we feel good? And chat, y'all can be like, yes or no, right? Do we feel good about Jackson Powers Johnson? Do we feel good about Zach Frazier? Do we feel good about um, Graham Barton? Do we feel good about Christian Haynes? I do, from, from UConn. Do I feel good about Christian Mahogany, Boston College? Yes. Cedric Van Pran, center from Georgia? Yes. Mason McCormick, guard and center. One of um, Duke's kids. Yes, I feel great about him. Bo Lemmer, I feel solid about. Um, all the interior dudes, all they all bunched in the same. They all packed up in there. All them dudes are are, are round, late twos, threes, and fours guys, right? Bo Lemmer may make it to five. Michigan got four dudes that can play guard for you right now. I think it's different. I think it's different. So, hey man, if, if Cowboys want to tackle, I'm I'm normally not trade up guy. I'm not trade up guy. But I need to see if Mims can play left tackle or if I can or what pick I can give up to go get Fountainu. And I'm going to go and corral in. Y'all don't want to see Vach going to go and corral in. Anyway. Cadoza said 300 balls and running changed everything. Man, you had to be there, bro. You had to be there for OVO sound. You know what I'm saying? Like you just, just 
call ain't got no mamas, man. All right, here we go. <clears throat> let's uh let's get into where are we at? Sick of this. There we go. All right. Let's get into it. Let's read some questions. <clears throat> Do y'all hear these people that they want to wait until I started streaming to come and put ladders on the side of the roof to come to come paint the building? That's why I'm buying a house in Dallas because I'm sick of these hoes. They know I'm streaming. They're gonna wait all they gonna wait till 355 to come slam ladders against my wall. Y'all, y'all hear that? All right. <clears throat> Let's see. Jay uh Cinco Sync Sync no JC Inc. JC Inc. number 785. Uh-huh. Uh first of all, can y'all see for the old folks in the back? Can y'all see the questions on screen? For the old heads in the back, can y'all see? Cause y'all be acting like y'all can't see, man. I just wanna make sure y'all can see. Let me move this over here so I can see. All right, y'all good? Y'all scrape? Can y'all see? Hold on, let me move. Let me rearrange some things, hold on. Boom. Boom. I can just move this over there. So I can see the chat. All right, I just I just want to be able to see the chat, man. Cause y'all, cause y'all the reason why the, why this show means anything, man. I just want to be able to see y'all. All right, um, linebacker and linebacker, and I'm also seeing if calling Tampa Bay and saying if was it now, mind y'all, this was a month ago. So if there's some free agency questions on there, my fault. Just ignore it. Play along. I like you don't see it. Uh, let's see. We we'll trade up a couple of spots to get ahead of Philly to draft Jackson Powers Johnson. I think the interior offensive lineman gonna gonna fall a little bit for the for the exact reason um, that we just talked about. Like it's just a little thicker, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, you could get Jackson Powers Johnson early, but there's a lot of dudes that you could value uh, later on later on down the line. You know what I'm saying? Like like I'm a I'm a Zach Frazier fan. I'm a Christian Mahogany fan. I'm a um, Christian Haynes fan. Check out the uh, senior bowl coverage for all those guys, you know. Also, too, I think I think Jackson Powell is gonna fall a little bit, be, be, fall a little bit because um, of his injuries. But one character that ain't falling nowhere is Graham Barton. Graham Barton ain't falling nowhere. Whenever thirty-two teams come to your damn pro day to see you, they wasn't there for Dwayne Carter. <laughs> they came to see you. Nah, he ain't gonna make it. Would you trade up? Would you trade up a couple? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Also, too, I don't want to jump in front of nobody for nobody. Like, if I trade up, it's because I need somebody. It ain't because you know. What position should the Cowboys target in terms of priority in free agency? And look, so look, this question still matters because the Cowboys ain't done nothing. But hey, if you if you sign David Bakhtiari to come play left tackle for you, you feel a little better about the rest of your situation. If J.K. Dobbins ended up here, you would feel a little better about your running back situation. I'm just draft a receiver. Like wide receivers are just so much better when you just like rookie wide receivers are just so much. Uh, they're they're ready so much earlier than they used to be. That's why I like Jalen Tobin upset me. If we're really all in, we not. What position do we attack first? OK, cool. How much does drafting a, a solid center affect how affect the how in the run scheme when studying other what do you think man? uh when you go to football school you have to register you have to register who you are what position you coach and you deal with and all that and then they teach you how to do it whenever you go to football school when i went to football school i was o line guy and when you're o line guy they kind of bunch you in as tight end guy but i was also interested in play calling and we ran zone spread those little concepts or whatever and the first thing that they the first thing that they teach you in zone class when you go to football school is you got to deal with a gap and block the mic whatever is in a gap you got to handle it you cannot run zone efficiently you have pressure and penetration coming up a gap because guard is thick pause you cannot have penetration there so you have to deal with a gap where there's two people there, whether it's a linebacker walk down, wherever, and you got to block the mic. If you do those, those two things, you can run the inside zone effectively. If there's anybody that's notorious for running into a, 
a a gap player or running into a Mike linebacker player, it's a center. It's a center, right? So if you're a center and you could deal with a gap by yourself, kind of like Travis used to do, and you can block the mic. You're you're athletic enough to climb and block the mic. Brian Broaddus calls it cutting the defense in half. If you're able to do that, then there you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Good question. Uh, how much does drafting us? Okay, cool. can you do a mock draft? <laughs> it's false. No way. Not this time. We created it. Not this time. No. Not this time. It's totally. Do you feel like this draft is pointless for the Cowboys if they move on from this regime after the season? No, uh, I just feel like the next staff may not want the people we take in this draft. Like us not knowing what to do with Mozzie. Let me tell you something, man. If I'm the Cowboys, I'm not drafting somebody. I mean, pardon me. If I'm the Cowboys, I'm not signing somebody that don't know how to use Michael Parsons. I'm not signing somebody that don't know how to use Dak Prescott. I'm not signing nobody that don't know how to use CeeDee Lamb. Can you imagine us getting a new coach and they see Trey Diggs and they go, nah, this ain't this ain't the kind of player I want. What? Okay, and 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 look, those are your bona fide guys, right? But even a dude like Deron Bland, you should find something to do with Deron Bland. Zimmer didn't draft Sam Weeds, but he'll find something to do with him. Nah, nah, no such thing as a as a waste of time drafting somebody. You know what I'm saying? Nah, 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 nah. Uh, let's say in a chaos scenario, everyone falls. Someone reaches in the top ten. Who is your best pick? Let's say in a chaos dress in a chaos draft scenario, someone falls. Someone. Let's say in a chaos draft scenario, comma, everyone falls, comma, someone reaches in the top 10. Wait, 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 wait. Someone falls, comma, and someone reaches in the top 10, period, capital W. Who is your best pick? No top quarterbacks are at 24. We don't need quarterbacks. But everyone else is. Say they fall. So nine, so top nine quarterback process. Do y'all hear that? So, okay, I'm stressing it. So everyone falls. Boom. Someone reaches in the top ten, like JJ McCarthy or Bo Nix or something, right? Who is your best pick? Uh, like Fuaga or something. I, <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you. Good question, Doc. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Would you trade up? Let me see where we at on OBS. Uh, there we go. Uh, would you trade up a few picks to get hit? Nah. I don't even think Philly needs a center. They got two guards that can play center. Um, Dickerson and um the Nebraska kid Jurgens, like they both play center. So I don't think they'll be drafting a, a new center. They may go draft a tackle. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, 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 they may, they may draft a tackle in, in case of emergencies. They better be thinking about linebacker and corner defense. What's the biggest need for us right now? We might be able to acquire in the first round of the draft or best player of it. left tackle, man, left tackle. Lots of options, O line, a strong cornerback, wide receiver, something like that. Hey, hey, left tackle, bro. Left tackle, bro. All right, so uh, yeah, we uh, bam, there we go. We have finally completed a month later. We have finally completed the AMA. Okay, Fisk or Wilson at twenty four. 
who is Wilson? Which Wilson? I'm assuming not Johnny Wilson, but Wilson who? Wilson who? Wilson, Wilson, who is Wilson? Fisk or Wilson? Johnny Wilson? Peyton Wilson? Not at 24. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. No, Peyton Wilson ain't. No, no. If Peyton Wilson was healthy, I'm 100% taking uh, Peyton Wilson at, at 24, but, I'm, but he ain't healthy. So I'm just hoping he fall. Bordellini in the six. I don't think Bordellini's all that great, but, you know. I love uh, Fautenu. He's got similar. He got, I think he's got Slater like movement skills and technique. Yeah. Yeah. Fautenu, Fautenu tough, man. And I was talking to, I mean, I, I, was, I was just talking to Brian Brock. It's false. Well, no, I was on the Brian Brock. Dom DeMarco, Marco. I definitely was on the Brian Brock. And I was telling him that Troy Fautenu could be this year's. Man, what's our guy last year played at Tennessee? He got drafted the right tackle or whatever. That dude or whatever, right? Like you know, like one one draft is in my mind, the next draft leaves or whatever. But there was this this uh Darnell Wright. We was thinking that Darnell Wright was was in play for Dallas. We was like, oh man, Darnell Wright could be a dude that that is, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes you gotta look at the film, man, like, you know. Sometimes when you early in the in the in the film process, you do run into a too good you you run into a lot of too good to be trues. You know what I'm saying? You run into a lot of too good to be true sometimes, right? And if you're watching Troy Fountainu and people saying, "Oh well, Vice, he's like a second round pick or something," he was never a second round pick to me. But I didn't think he was gonna be going like super early. Daniel Jeremiah got him projected as like his twelfth dude, like overall. And if Jeremiah got him ranked as like the the 12th dude overall, he's the left tackle. If Jeremiah got him ranked as the 12th dude overall, he's not going to be here. He's not going to be here, bro. Hmm. How about Trey Benson in the second? I think Trey ben, I think running backs I don't I don't I don't think we have to take a running back in the second round. I think a running back stretch to the third. Running back is deep, it ain't thick. <laughs> it's deep, but ain't thick, Paul. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, man, Fountain was a dude, man. I'm, I'm watching him as far as his hands, his movement, technique, temperament, snatch technique on. You know what I mean? He's just, he just, he just, he's he's a dude. Snatch. He, he's just a dude, man. So I don't, I don't think he's he's a he's a guy that's in Dallas's range. He's uh he's way too valuable for us. So I don't even want to. I don't even want to act like he's a dude that's an option for us. We we need to just stick to Mims and <sighs> knock on wood about this whole guiding thing. Chad. I got a look. And this mother just climbing up. God damn, dog. I'm trying to do a show here. Edrin Cooper or or Peyton Wilson. I got Peyton Wilson as the better player, but I do I do think Edrin Cooper's gonna gonna go a little early. Chad, do y'all have any questions here? We can just do a little bit of a QA if y'all ain't doing nothing else. Tap in with you. Do a little bit of Q and A. Which one you doing nothing else? Answer some of your questions. I got a little film uh, queued up for many of the players that y'all possibly could ask me about. So you know we we good to go. So chat, what's happening? What y'all got for me? Early morning and Vice got film going. Bless. Appreciate you, Alex. Where you at? You talking about some early morning? What you what you in? I ain't gonna say nothing. Last year, Will McDonald jumped all the way up to fifteen. Ugh, I was hurt, dog. I was hurt because I was ready to blow up. I was ready to. <laughs> I had that Will McDonough interview in the tuck, man. I was like, hey, man, let him fall to Dallas, boy. Let, let the damn first round pick the first interview he has as a cowboy. And I got the interview just rolling it out on Twitter before anybody. Boy, I was ready to. I was ready to blow up, dog. I was ready to be famous. I, 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 I was waiting on fame to call, but the Jets got him. And the Jets ain't even using him. What up, Ron? We got to get to work, man. Got to get to work. When am I trading back? Uh, psh, man, I'll I'll take more picks anytime. But for the picks that I want, you would have to trade back in the first round, right? Because trading back at the second round would just get you like what? A fifth or something? That ain't cute. 
<laughs> I don't want no fifth. South Korea. Damn. I don't want no fifth. I want a, a third or something. You know what I'm saying? So I think to get a third, you got to move back from 24. And I'll do it because all my all my favorite players in that range. Somebody asked me about Wheezy, which is Dwayne Carter, and then somebody dropped a super chat about it. That may be the same person. I mean, there's this one dude that don't like Vash that said, I, you know, I be, I be coming out here brainwashing people or whatever that I be trying to, you know what I'm saying, manipulate y'all and brainwash y'all a little bit. The late great Black Phillips said, when your hands are when your hands are dirty, you wash them. <laughs> when your hands are dirty, you wash them, right? So I mean, you know, sure, maybe early in this draft process, I discovered Dwayne Carter from Duke defensive tackle, and it wasn't a whole bunch of people talking about him. And maybe I did brainwash some people. <laughs> into making folks kind of watch Dwayne Carter a little bit, but but that's what we do in draft season. That's what we do in draft season. You know what I'm saying? We we or Vach does at least. Vach brainwash people, and I I let y'all know who we need to be watching. Jalen Polk is somebody that's 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 been overlooked. You need to keep eyes on Jalen Polk. Dwayne Carter is somebody that's been overlooked. You need to keep eyes on Dwayne Carter. Ray Davis is gonna get overlooked. You need to keep eyes on Ray. I'm giving you, I'm giving you answers. <laughs> I'm giving, I'm giving you answers. But anyway, uh, Kansas City. Yeah, I, I've seen the Kansas City trade trade scenario. We'll see. International fans in the house about going global. Hey man, shout out to you, man. Uh, let's see, Byron Murphy or Corley. Byron, Byron Murphy is a, is a is a much better player, and he's much higher on my board than Malachi Corley is. But in this particular situation, Brian Murphy or Malachi Corley, why not both? Why not both? Shit, Malachi Corley is a dude that you can get outside of the first round. Brian uh, Byron Murphy is a guy that you got to get in the first round. I think Malachi Corley, uh, you know, teams are gonna kind of look look over him because he doesn't do a whole bunch as a wide receiver, but he does a bunch like as a yak guy, like as a yak guy football player dude. But hey, if y'all want to not draft Malachi Corley because he don't run routes, cool. I'll put him in Dallas, and I wouldn't make him not. I would. He ain't got to run out a route in Dallas. He can run bubbles and slants, and he can take handoffs all you want. I don't care. That that boss man fat brainwash was different. Well, I wasn't responsible for boss man being a failure. He don't work hard. He wanted to be a rapper. All I got is the film. If I had an opportunity to talk to boss man fat and interview him and all that, then then you know, of course, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have thought of him in that way. But just as a cornerback prospect, I'm just talking about a just as a as a dude, just as a as a as a player. Man, got to work hard, man. I can only watch so much. For, I think Malachi's a a damn stud, but if he ain't working hard, what you want, what you want me to say? If 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 he don't work hard once he gets to the league, what you, what you want me to say? Kelvin's so trash. Uh, let's see. Malachi may be your draft crush. Isn't he all? Isn't he everybody's? McMillan is good. Vach, I think Vach, I really think Worthy may be a difference maker. I think I think Worthy be a good player in the league. Yeah, I I, I don't look at, at Worthy like he's a, a John Ross or or a Jalen Rager type character. I don't I don't I don't think they're the same. I don't I don't think they're the same. Actually, the conference has been locked. I'm a, I'm gonna go ahead and lock that up because I got some uh some important content to do after the show. I, I might end a little early got an interview to do and that's going to drop so um i'll probably end this early just to do some more uh just to drop more content for y'all uh him and osa in a 4-3 would be nasty it just depends on who's going to be playing three tech and i hope dallas's answer to one tech isn't just put two two three techs on the field and just one of them got to be an a gap like i hope that ain't the case rb nightmare says could i see dallas double dipping at any position what would be the best? What what would be the best to do so? Shit, offensive line. If you if you consider offensive line double dipping, like O line and D line or something like that. If you consider that unit double dipping, then yeah, O line D line. 
Boss man had more red flags than the, than the Chinese military parade. Oi, no, relax. Oi, no. Uh, Worthy is a cold ass route runner. Um, he's he's fine. He he's a he's a better route runner than the other run fast guys. Yeah. Yeah. This is a draft that could be really interesting for the future of the Cowboys offense. Some different kind of weapons are available. All I want is to be creative. I really think that this is the year, like just draft wise, right? You've been drafting so many defensive players, fooling around with with Quinn or whatever. You've just been dealing with so many defensive players, bro. Put the free agents on defense and let Zimmer deal with them. Draft your offensive players, bro. Draft your offensive players, bro. Man, man, if you get an offensive lineman, receiver, and a running back in this class, man, you up, dog. And and Zimmer can have all the day three picks he wants. Just just have at it, sir. Have at it, my guy. Uh, let me check out. Let me check out some of y'all supers, man. Let me, let me see what's going on here. Any other questions before I get up out of here, y'all? I got to get ready for this uh, for this other piece of content I got to do for y'all. Turkey leg hut files for bankruptcy. Oh no! <laughs> I got to get over there before they shut down. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, what I got to do? Super chats. I got to read y'all super chats. Here we go. Soups. AJ Metal dropped a deuce and says, Alt, Fashionu, Barton, Morgan, Fuaga in that order. Those are your offensive linemen in order. You got Fuaga at five? Come on, AJ. Jolis. Uh, appreciate you. Waylon dropped a deuce and says, Now finding out about the Jackson Powers Johnson injury risk. Pick 24? Possibly. Possibly. I think it's going to be hard to mess up 24, dog. It's going to be hard to mess up 24, bro. Appreciate you, though. Night 405, Drop the Deuce says, how you feel about Dwayne Carter from Duke? I answered your question already. Appreciate you, sir. And Weedon Boys Drop 5 says, I hope they draft the best uh, the best O-lineman available at 24, best player available in the second, draft running back in the third. That's not a horrible plan. Knowing the Cowboys, they may just roll with uh, Rico Dowdle. But he ain't going to be healthy, so it's it's it's... Some conversations to be had, man. I would I would just love to have another pick, man. I just I don't know, just that whole Trey Lance thing, bro. 49ers was was they were gonna cut Trey Lance. And even them cutting Trey Lance, I'd rather have you know sent a 2027 eighth round pick to the Jets and got Zach Wilson. I think Zach Wilson is a better prospect than Trey Lance, but give him giving up the fourth round, the fourth round pick for him. Ugh. The CD show ain't going to work like that next year. People are underestimating CD since he got in the league. It won't happen again. I don't think you, I don't think teams underestimated CD. I think teams took CD incredibly different. It's just in the flow of the offense. There were just some things that was just unbeatable, man. You run pre-snap motion. Honestly, if we keep it in the buck here, if we keep it in the buck here, that's four, bro. That's four, man. That's four, man. I don't know. Hey, man, you know, pre-snap motion, set it up. It's up to the quarterback to find the open space and to figure out the hole in the defense and to anticipate the throw in it. I don't know if you want them people that don't want to give full credit, but Marcus Hardison says, "Hold on, where you go? All right, here we go." Marcus Hardison says, "Success often emerges from the ashes of setbacks." And the lessons learned during adversity paved the way for lasting achievements. Now, hold on, dog. Wait, 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 wait. 
that time, that time right now. Success often emerges from the ashes of setbacks. You gotta fail. You gotta fail, bro. Failing is a black. Success often emerges from the ashes of setbacks. And lessons during adversity pave the way for lasting achievements. Salute to Brother Vice, Brother Scott, and my crew. Appreciate you, Brother Marcus Harrison. Hold this L, sir. You ain't doing nothing else. UNLV line sleep outside. Young pimp, young gold, young line. Oh, sir. That's fire. That's fire. Hit, oh, yo, yo, chat. Hit the emojis, man. Shouts out to you. Yo, chat. Hit the emojis. He ain't lying, did he? Yo, chat. He ain't. Yo, chat. He cooking, ain't he? Yo, chat. He cooking, ain't he? Yo, man. You, 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 you gotta fail to know what you're doing wrong, dog. You got to fail to know what you're doing wrong, dog. Hey, man, shots out to him, bro. Shots out to him, bro. Man, man, yo, Mark, yo, Marcus went a little crazy. All the time, yo, do I got to, do I got to drop for this? Do I got to try? I can see what they're doing, what he's doing. He's cooking. <laughs> Great. Oh, no, Vice set off the haters. Uh, here come the day. Hey, you know, I don't want to say nothing, you know. I ain't, I, you know, I don't have to argue about four right now. It is what. Apparently, he's not going to be here next year, so I ain't got to argue about four. Hey, man, love y'all to pieces, bro. About to get ready to uh, get some other content going. Like I said, uh, you, just in case all the notifications aren't coming through, be sure to hit the notification bell so that you can know when I'm when I'm going live. I'm going to be giving y'all much more content coming. Okay. Much more content coming. Like I said earlier, Law Nation inspired me to do some more content. As long as I got something to say, I'm going to be dropping some more content. And I noticed that some people uh, didn't get the notifications today uh, for my other videos that, um, that that dropped earlier, whether it be my film session or my um, soliloquy about Tyler Smith playing left tackle there. So I mean, uh, yeah, 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 left uh, left guard there. So y'all be sure to cut your notifications on just to just to make sure that y'all uh getting everything if you need to if you need to cut it on and cut it back off then do that or if you just need to cut the damn thing on in the first place then i'd be eternally grateful if y'all did that okay uh besides that man v-o-c-h-l-o-n-b-a-r-d-i y'all hold down the doski well till next time i mean Bye.